Car waste is piling up. If we don't deal with it properly, it can cause huge problems for the environment and future generations who must deal with the cleanup. There is a lot we can do as consumers to reduce the amount of waste we produce and to ensure waste is disposed properly. But more broadly, are the old ways of waste management, dumping in landfill, still viable in the face of more sustainable options? Here we'll explore some of these alternatives to landfill. What are they? What sorts of wastes can they be used for? How do they work? And most importantly, how will they help us to deal with our waste more efficiently to leave a better planet for future generations? Since ancient times, we've disposed of our waste mainly in three ways which are still in use. Incineration, where the waste is directly combusted, environmental release, such as into waterways, and lastly, sequestering waste into rubbish pits or landfills. Now, landfill has evolved into the main disposal method for solid waste. However, it's not without problems. It can concentrate toxins which may leak into the environment. The liquid that forms at the bottom of landfills can be highly toxic and potentially enter groundwater. And as materials break down in landfill, they release an enormous amount of greenhouse gases. Some of these issues are being controlled by strict regulations on landfills that now exist. For example, they must be built on a geological base to prevent leaking into groundwater. They must then cover this rock with an impermeable barrier, and they must cover the waste each day. Eventually, they must also cap the landfill to prevent greenhouse gases from being released into the atmosphere. The most potent greenhouse gas generated in landfills, methane, is also highly flammable so landfill operators are required to monitor methane levels to limit risks to the community. Later, specialist companies must come in to retrieve the gas which is built up and often use it to provide energy to communities. Even with these new regulations, there are still a number of issues with landfills where toxins do escape and even where methane buildup has resulted in explosions. Lastly, something that is getting more and more attention is, should we be sending material to landfill when it can be recycled. In Australia, when we think of recycling, we think of plastic, glass and cardboard. But what we're going to talk about here is actually something else. Recycling of energy and nutrients from organic material. When we grow crops on agricultural land, we remove nutrients from the soil, which have to be replaced by applying fertilisers. Our organic waste, agricultural residues, garden waste, food waste from our homes, still contain a lot of these nutrients and can be recycled back onto farmland in some cases, reducing the need for commercial fertilizer production. You'd be familiar with some technologies that achieve this, like composting, and maybe not as familiar with how it fits into other waste technologies, like bioethanol production or anaerobic digestion. Here we're going to talk about all three. Composting is nothing new. A very important step is the preparation of a high-grade compost to use on the soil. In composting, natural processes act on organic wastes to recycle nutrients back into forms that are useful to plants. From this, a high-quality fertilizer can be produced. The materials which can be utilized include garden waste, cardboard, food scraps, manures, rocks, and agricultural residues like straw. The process is largely the same now as you see here. Different types of waste are piled on top of one another in rows. If the process is performed correctly, the conditions remain aerobic and microorganisms help break down the waste into a soil-like material. Organic waste contains nitrogen and phosphorus, but not immediately in the correct form for reuptake into plants. Phosphorus in organic waste is contained as organic forms, such as in nucleic acids and proteins, and the same is true for nitrogen. To be available again for plants, fungi must act on organic phosphorus to convert it to inorganic forms such as orthophosphate, while a whole range of microorganisms are involved in converting nitrogen from waste or the air into forms usable by plants, nitrates or ammonium. During a typical composting process, some carbon dioxide is released. However, the process does lead to more carbon being captured back into the soil and reduces the demand for synthetic fertilizers, 
making the process a net carbon sink. However, if the process is not performed correctly and conditions become anaerobic, methane can leak into the atmosphere. Relatively recently, Bokashi composting, also known as fermented composting, has gained greater attention due to the lack of gas production. It functions completely differently, the process relying on fermentation rather than the decomposition to convert nutrients. However you achieve it, the main benefit of composting is the production of high quality fertilizer, which can act as a carbon sink and return important nutrients to the soil. Although, composting does not recycle energy, only nutrients. So what techniques, aside from incineration, are available to generate energy from waste? Microorganisms can also be used to break down waste into fuels, such as bioethanol. First generation bioethanol production focused on growing crops specifically for fuel production, like corn. While the process is carbon neutral, the use of so much fertile land for fuel production can lead to deforestation, nutrient depletion in the soil, and a reduction of fertile land for growing food crops. This led people to question whether large-scale biofuel crop production is the best use of fertile land. More recently, second-generation biofuel production has emerged, which focuses mainly on organic waste streams, which can also be processed into bioethanol. These include residues from agriculture, such as the discarded wheat straw seen here, woody waste from forestry industries, waste from maintenance of parks and gardens, and also energy crops that can grow on low-quality soil, for example certain grasses. While second-generation biofuels reduce competition with food production, some sort of pretreatment is generally required to help unlock sugars from the biomass. These pretreatments can be biological, chemical or physical in nature, for example mechanical crushing. After pretreatment, the sugars in the substrate are more easily accessible to the microorganisms that will drive the conversion process to ethanol. It is also emerging that the wastes left over from bioethanol production can be processed into fertilizers by direct application to soil through anaerobic digestion or through other processes. Focusing on the most common method, simultaneous saccharification and fermentation, or SSF, the pretreated substrate is added to the vessel. Enzymes and fermentative microorganisms are also present. The enzymes are typically harvested from filamentous fungi such as Aspergillus nigellans, Aspergillus niger, Penicillium species, or Trichoderma ricei. These fungi are naturally adept at breaking down plant material, and so using their enzymes to break down plant material here makes perfect sense. Thanks to pretreatment, more of the complex carbohydrate present in the waste can be exposed to the enzymes. These enzymes work to break bonds and ultimately release sugars, mostly glucose and xylose, into the vessel. Fermentative microorganisms, usually yeasts, can then work on these sugars during the alcoholic fermentation pathway to ultimately produce energy for their growth along with carbon dioxide and ethanol. The ethanol is then purified out of the vessel and is commonly used as an additive or substitute for conventional fuels. So, bioethanol production from waste leaves us with a liquid fuel which is easy to transport and simple to utilize in existing vehicles, and there is the potential for the residues to return nutrients to the soil. However, there are several key challenges for second generation bioethanol production. One is improving the efficiency of pretreatments to get the most out of the waste as cost-effectively as possible. Secondly, the enzymes which break down fibre typically work best under different conditions than the fermentative microorganisms require, so improving efficiency here through different enzymes or modified organisms will be useful. And thirdly, much of the plant waste that could be used is simply left on the fields to return nutrients to the soil. As such, this technology won't be sustainable unless the fertilizer potential of bioethanol production waste is realized.
One method which converts waste to energy and fertilizer quite well is anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digestion can utilize a greater variety of wastes than bioethanol production and is used to treat everything from domestic sewage to industrial, agricultural and food production waste. Sometimes, as with ethanol production, pretreatments are required to help unlock nutrients in the waste. In anaerobic digestion, material is fed into a large reactor vessel along with an inoculum of particular microbes. The reactor is then sealed for several weeks to allow the microbes to degrade the waste in anaerobic conditions. These conditions favour a symbiotic community of microbes which break down the waste and produce a methane-rich biogas as a byproduct. The biogas is then captured and converted to heat and electricity. The remaining solids are rich in nitrogen and phosphorus and can be utilised as a soil conditioner. Taking a closer look at the production of biogas, it's actually a four-stage process, beginning with hydrolysis. Here, complex polymers in the waste, like long-chain carbohydrates, are broken down into smaller chunks by hydrolyzing microorganisms. Then, during acidogenesis, fermentative bacteria convert sugars into volatile fatty acids, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. Following this, fermentative microbes also play a role in the formation of acetate during the acidogenesis phase. And finally, methanogenesis occurs, where methanogenic bacteria and archaea utilize acetate or carbon dioxide and hydrogen to produce methane. Methane-rich biogas is a rich fuel which is typically burned to produce electricity and heat, reducing reliance on fossil fuels. New technology is also being investigated where the hydrogen associated with methane is stripped away to produce hydrogen fuel, a clean burning fuel likely to play a major role in zero carbon transport. In the future, it may even be possible to directly produce hydrogen from waste through a complex and little understood process known as dark fermentation. Aside from the biogas, microbes can also be harnessed to produce chemicals during the process to refine and sell, such as butyric acid. Additionally, the nutrient-rich biosolids add further value to the process and help return nutrients to the soil. However, there are challenges for biogas. The biogas yield varies depending on the waste, and new waste streams require significant investment in optimization. To get more biogas, it is typically best to mix several waste streams together, sometimes requiring collaboration between different industries. The fertilizer potential also varies, with some biosolids being toxic to plants or containing contaminants, while others are perfectly safe and have beneficial effects for the plants. It seems to depend on the source of the waste. Agricultural residues such as wheat straw and manures are thought to produce higher quality biosolids for fertilizer, while treated sewage or industrial waste carry a greater risk of transferring contaminants to the soil. Although, when it works, it works well. Treating waste, generating renewable gas, recycling nutrients, and providing a return on investment. Because of this, we're likely to see anaerobic digestion continue to play a big role in waste treatment as we move towards a decentralized waste management future. So, if waste is managed poorly, it's a problem. But if managed well, it can provide a huge opportunity to generate renewable energy, recycle nutrients back to the soil, and more. In truth, we've only scratched the surface of what's possible with organic waste. We've seen composting, which can recycle agricultural waste back into the soil. We've looked at bioethanol production, which can take woody and fibrous wastes to generate liquid fuel and has the potential to recycle nutrients too. And we've seen biogas production, which can take a range of wastes and is already being used to produce both power and fertilizer in one step. From this, we can hopefully appreciate that there is value in waste.